On a few different occasions now, people have done a magic trick with me with a calculator on their phone. So they'll ask me a bunch of questions like my date of birth, my house number, my weight in pounds, the age of my cat, and they'll multiply all of these numbers together and the answer is my phone number. So the last time this happened to me, I genuinely lost sleep over this. I just couldn't figure it out. How could they know the exact mathematical formula to generate my phone number? What if I had given a different answer? For example, what if I'd said my weight was 150 instead of 160? I've even had it when they've asked other people around me, like their husband's age or their shoe size, and still the answer was correct. Still I got punked. How is this possible? And that's when I figured it out. It's all BS. The app on their phone, it isn't a calculator. It just looks like a calculator app. All these numbers that you type in, they don't really matter. All that happens is when you push equals, it displays a number that you have previously entered in. It's a magic calculator. And since I'm stuck inside anyway, I thought it was about time I learned app development and made my own magic calculator so that you can all download it and punk your friends. I tweeted out that I wanted to learn this a while ago and a bunch of people suggested I use Flutter. What is Flutter you ask? Well, an open source UI software development kit created by Google. It is used to develop applications for Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, Google Fush, Fushia? and the web. All right, so here's how I understand this. The app itself, that's like the cake. And the chef, well, the chef bakes the cake. The chef has all the tools to make any cake you want and can put it all together. Flutter is the chef. She can bake iOS and Android cakes from the same recipe, but she can't improvise. She can only follow precise instructions and she can only speak a few languages, notably Dart. The recipe, the program, must be written in Dart. So who am I in all this? Well, I'm Mary Berry. I write the recipe. I'm the programmer, okay? So I need to learn to speak Dart so I can use it in Flutter so I can bake a nice app that you can all download. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is day one, hour zero. All right, we are somehow two hours in because that's how long it took me to figure out how to install Flutter onto my laptop. Anyway, I found this um, tutorial playlist on YouTube. I'm just gonna start from the top and work my way down and see what we can learn. I made a little app with a button, an icon and stuff. Look, I mean, I copied the tutorial line for line, but it runs. Click, 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 mail, mail, mail. One of the coolest things about designing the app is that you emulate it in a, a phone on your computer. So this is a Pixel 3a emulated on the PC and it works like a proper phone. Like uh, if I drag up, um, I can go to, I don't know, calendar. And you know, it's a proper Google Calendar app. And this is how you test your apps. You run them in an emulator rather than connecting a, a real hardware phone. I've never seen this before. It's really awesome. All right, this is day two. I am making some progress. Right now I've figured out how to put buttons in a grid on the screen. Right now these buttons do nothing, but you can imagine how I could lay these out to look like a regular calculator screen. I found Flutter actually really intuitive to learn. The tutorials by NetNinja on YouTube are also excellent to watch. Let me show you a little demonstration. This app that I've got running right now is just a blank screen with the word body in the top left. But in most mobile applications, you'll see like an app bar at the top. Now I can't think of how you would program that, but Flutter has it all ready for you. And it's, it's simply just app bar. And there's the app bar, text is text. So if I want to say something else like uh, subscribe, it says subscribe. 
It looks really daunting, but all programming does. But once you get your head around how it works, it's actually quite intuitive. Right now, I think I have enough knowledge to program a super simple app, like one single piece of information that it displays and put it on my phone and see if it actually works. So I'm gonna do that now. From knowledge gained exclusively through the YouTube tutorials, I was able to build my own app that displays some text on the screen with relatively few hiccups. Sure, there were a few errors here and there that caused issues, but I managed to get through it. Next, I wanted to have the app get the date from the phone. This was the first time I tried something that wasn't covered in the tutorials, but it was a pretty easy Google search. After a bit of tidying up, and my first app was done. So the only thing this app does when you open it is tell you if it is February the 29th, which I'm sure you all know only happens on a leap year. So it'll be like three years and I don't know, 10 or months until this app says yes. <laughs> so super, super simple and useful in my opinion. The reason I made this was because I know it runs on this emulator on the computer, but I wanna see if it actually runs on a phone. All right, USB cable and into phone. Yes, hello. This code is gonna, instead of building the app on an emulator on a computer, it's gonna build it on a real Android phone. So let's see if this works. So I'm just gonna click run. Yes, <laughs> it works. Is it February the 29th? No. I will debug this in 2024. To have an app running on the phone, that's progress. Alrighty then, this is day three. So, so far I've successfully been able to make this stupidly simple and pointless app following the tutorials pretty much step by step. So now I think I have enough knowledge to start making the calculator app. Now this is when I venture into uncharted waters because this is the first time I'll be trying to develop something that isn't just explicitly explained in the tutorials I've been watching. So I have a simple design in my head. Here's what I want it to do. Firstly, the app needs to look like a calculator app. It needs to look so unremarkable that people don't notice anything fishy going on. Next, there needs to be a way to access the contacts. I figured I would do this with a long press on the screen. The contacts page needs to allow the user to select a phone number, store it, and then go back to the calculator page. When the equal sign is pressed, the app should display the stored phone number. That's it. I think a good starting point would be to get a basic calculator layout on the screen with buttons that you can push. Let's code that up. Displaying a button grid layout should be simple. However, because I no longer had the tutorials guiding me every step of the way, I inevitably ran into some errors. Incorrect use of parental data compiler message error. Too many positional arguments. Why can a container have a child but not children? Please configure Android SDK. I changed nothing there and now it works. This makes no sense. The named parameter height isn't defined. I'm just gonna turn it off and turn it back on again. Incorrect use of parental widgets. Only static members can be accessed. So I have to do the whole thing. After five grueling hours of errors, I had something that resembles a calculator screen. Now this is looking a little bit better. Look, we have a, a button grid here. And when I click the buttons, it displays in absolutely tiny text the button that I just clicked. We're getting closer. All right, it is day four. Today, we're messing around with multiple screens. I want to slip in front of that, a screen where you pick a contact, 
and then for this screen to disappear again, leaving the calculator screen. So when you push equals, it displays the contact that you previously selected. To my surprise, this part of the project seemed to go through without any errors at all. Okay, when I long press this digit nine, it should route me to the settings page. It works, it works. That is fantastic. All of a sudden, I seem to have a better grasp of Flutter and how it works. I was able to quickly get the contacts page up and running. And then I got the calculator to display the phone number when the equal sign was pressed. I was able to give the app a quick tidy up to make things look a bit more convincing. And lastly, I had to figure out some details, like getting rid of zeros and pluses at the start of phone numbers. That would give the trick away. All right, this is day five. I'm pretty happy with this now. I mean, it's it's doing what it's supposed to do on the emulator anyway. If I hold this button, then it comes up with a settings screen. I can grant permission now, it gives access to contacts. It does have a couple of bugs, which I've wasted some time trying to get rid of. Next thing to do is to get it on a phone and try it out. We're gonna test this app, okay? So we're gonna trick Kim's sister, Lois. Uh, because I think Lois will be a good candidate. She likes magic, doesn't she? So the magic calculator app is installed on this phone, so I'm gonna open it up. So it looks like a standard calculator app, which is very good, because that's what we want it to do. So to enter the settings, you should push and hold, and then you need to grant permissions. So yep, allow access to contact. And then we're gonna view contacts. Um, and then we're gonna pick Lois's phone number here and that'll store Lois's phone number in the Magic Calculator app. So now we're ready to, to give her a phone, okay? Hi, Lois. How you doing? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and do a magic trick for you, okay? Oh, great, I love magic. <laughs> right, okay, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions. I'm gonna type the numbers into a calculator and okay. uh, we'll see what the answer is, okay? So um, the first thing I'm gonna ask you is your date of birth. Right, 13. 13, it's 06, 06. 06. I, know, I know this one. 1989? Yeah. Then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna multiply that number by the, num by the number of siblings that you've got. Right, okay, so that's, so that's times four. Four, okay. And then multiply that number by your shoe size, UK shoe size. Okay, that's five. Times five and then multiply that number by any four digit number that you choose. Okay, five, one, zero, seven. Five, one, zero, seven, okay? And then we're gonna add to that your current house number. Okay, so 18. Plus 18, right, you ready? Yeah. And I'm gonna push equals. No! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my god! Did you see that again? No, Mike! I'm just sure making me shake! <laughs> So this app and the Is It February the 29th app will be available in the Google Play Store. I couldn't get uh, the iOS emulator working to test these apps. I'm working on that one. Of course, the apps are free. Go and download them, check them out. Uh, try and trick some of your family. And whilst you are browsing around the App Store, you should check out and download ExpressVPN, who are the sponsors of this video. Here is why I use a VPN. First of all, I don't want my internet service provider having access to a list of sites that I visit. Aside from being a huge privacy question mark because they can legally sell that data in the US anyway, I don't want my ISP throttling certain websites to suit their agenda. I want access to all of the internet at full speed. Second of all, I don't want my ISP keeping logs of sites that I've visited. ExpressVPN don't run their servers on traditional hard drives, they run them on RAM. God, that must be really expensive. Anyway, what that means is, once the server's turned off, once the power's gone, that data is gone forever. 
But the most common use case is you can route your internet connection through any country you like. Whatever use might you have for that? So there are many VPNs. So why use ExpressVPN? Well, it's the fastest, so there's that. It connects in one click. You get access to 24 seven chat support if something does go wrong. And it's voted number one by TechRadar. Using my link in the description, you can get three months for free. And if you decide you don't like it in the first 30 days, you can just get a full refund. Of course, it runs on all the usual suspects. That's Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, Android, loads more. So go check it out. Thank you to ExpressVPN for the support. And thanks to you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.